over here all the parts printed and what you're going to need is obviously some screws uh, here i have four m3 by 10 countersunk screws and five m3 by 12 uh, regular just um, button head screws here's one i put together um, earlier this is for a 3 16th inch link and this one's for a quarter inch uh, obviously also going to need some bearings there i'm using five by 11 by four so basically 11 uh, uh, millimeter out of diameter, five millimeter inner diameter, and four millimeters thick. So this is the assembled one. Uh, you're also gonna want some M4 bolts to bolt this down to whatever surface you're working on, but for now, I'm just gonna assemble this. I'll also link an exploded diagram uh, in the description below and also at the very end of the video. So if you don't wanna download it, you can just look at the video uh, on how to construct this, uh, but it's pretty simple. So. The main difference between these two parts, obviously, is that the hole size. So one size, the holes are made three millimeters, while the other one's 2.8. And that's so um, the screws are supposed to thread through one side and bolt to the other side. So uh, just be aware uh, which one's which, um, so that you don't end up trying to like screw in something that's not supposed to go in. Next up, you're gonna to want to put your these spaces or bushings in. So basically this will enlarge the diameter so that the bearing will comfortably fit over onto the screw and use the screw as basically like the axle. The bushings themselves might need a bit of filing because uh, I'm trying to get it as snug as a fit as I can around the bearings. So here we essentially have half of the carrier um, constructed and now we just pop up the bearings in. Uh, for my print at least, I modeled these to be have a diameter of 4.95 millimeters and they pop on just fine without much finishing, but again, will depend on your uh, print settings, your specific printer, your filament. Oh, again, this is uh, ESAM PLA Plus, so this is a sort of tougher PLA, but still PLA nonetheless. One part of the design is that you can kind of see where the holes come, there's like a little protrusion around the hole and that's just to elevate the bearing slightly sort of like acts like this little spacer so that the bearing uh, is not rubbing so the outer race is not rubbing against the housing itself but yeah that is basically it and now all we have to do is close it up everything still spins freely which is the most important thing and uh, we obviously uh, still have our base to attach, so we're going to go ahead and do that now. Here we have a quarter inch bearing carrier. Here is our 3 16 inch. Uh, obviously this mounting position here, as you can see here, this is actually a square, so you can mount it either perpendicular or um, parallel to the bearings, depending on what sort of mounting position that you have or what you're mounting to. So, you know, it's not really a big deal. So here are two links that I have made previously. Uh, this is a quarter inch link, obviously, and a 3 16 inch stainless link, uh, both solid links and uh, both M4. Start with the 3 16 inch. Slides on there real nice. It doesn't come out um, and spins pretty nicely. Obviously, there's still quite a bit of wobble, but it doesn't matter too much. As long as you have the chuck on one side, uh, this will do just fine. This is really just to give it a little bit of support. Here's actually what I'm trying to avoid using by introducing this. You can see there's a huge wobble there. And, um, you know, uh, drill truck's not perfect, obviously. So by introducing this, this makes that this will allow the um, link to spin a lot truer, especially when it matters. Here we have our quarter inch version, which is basically the same exact thing, but just scaled up again. Spins just fine. Uh, again, a little bit of wobble play, not nothing too worrying. And let's go ahead into the workshop and actually put this to use. So here is the setup. Here's our 3 printed carrier bearing. Um, again, this is a sort of a sequel to a previous video, so um, highly recommend you watch that video first uh, to see sort of the process. But basically, we just have it bolted to a piece of wood that's clamped down. Um, to another vise and uh, just another piece of ballast at the bottom there uh, but obviously not ideal setup but uh, still a work in progress it worked pretty well I tested out last week made four links in about two hours time which is relatively quick but um, yeah it is uh, this is just the setup right now it's just definitely temporary I will 
make something um, better in the future, but uh, I'll just show you how I set it up. So here I have everything measured out and cut to length. Um, the small ones are actually pretty easy, I might not even need this, but here are the long ones that really need that extra support. These are measure 18.5 centimeters total length. These, if you just use the truck itself and the no support at the very end, are basically going to be impossible to do. They're going to be wobbling all over the place and it's going to be just, it's even going to be dangerous. So um, I'm going to show you how I set this up uh, with these longer ones and then we'll go from there. So it's relatively simple. This is already pretty much set up. I have this aligned uh, sort of uh, in line. It doesn't have to be super exact. Again, these are just uh, metal links and not sort of dry shaft components that will spin. So it doesn't really need to be that true, but um, this is already a lot better than without the um, attachment. As you can see here, um, this is all, that, all there is to it. Um, again, there is a little bit of wobble now, but once you spin it up to full speed, as you can see there, uh, the wobble goes away and you can get some really nice and clean cuts out of it. I'll be starting off with the uh, angle grind of the cutoff wheel that just uh, to make that groove and mark at the very end. And then I'll move in with a grinding disc here and just grind that uh, thread outer diameter down to uh, four millimeters and then we'll be able to use the die set to tap the threads onto the end. So yeah, here we have it. One link is done. That was pretty quick. Well, you know, Three minutes or so for well, both ends nice and true you go ahead and finish the rest just under an hour to do all of these pretty quick and we're going to move on to the um, tapping the threads with the die pretty simple I've explained it in the previous video but um, yeah just gonna do a quick time-lapse here So here we are, in a little bit, bit over two hours we have created six links for ourselves. These are really nice and strong stainless links. Uh, now I'm going to actually put bends into it and uh, I'll show you two ways to bend it. I have first a sharp bend which we'll, we'll use the vise and then we'll do a radius bend as well. To do this uh, we're actually going to use some of these. This is actually a tool that my grandfather made a long time ago. It's probably older than me at this point, but it's essentially just 3 8 inch um, stainless rod and it's been hammered and bent and then with the holes drilled on uh, each side and it's basically you thread your material in in the middle and then this gives you a lot of leverage so that you're able to bend it. But first we're going to measure it out. So we swapped over to a wider shot here. So I'm going to do two bends on this actually. So the first bend is going to be here, so that is what I want the middle of the bend to be and then this will basically where I want the tools to be at and by changing how close or far the tools together we can vary the radius of the bend. So obviously further away the bigger the radius, um, closer they are, tighter the radius. So the front one is about 1.5 um, centimeters from the middle of the bend each side and the second bend here is about one centimeter from the uh, middle of the bend. So I'm gonna thread the tool in. Here. And we're gonna try and line it up where our marks are and just give it a good bend. So there we have our bend, and now we just need to basically match it to the previous one that we made. So there we have our new bent link. It looks a little strange, but it'll all make sense later on when we have it installed to the truck. And in terms of corner bends, all I do is mark out where I want the bend is. I will put it in the vise 
and just hammer it to shape. Yeah, there we have it. We have built all the links for today. We've built the um, rear lower link here and all four front links. This particular build is looking really good so far. This is a sort of shafty, 2-2 um, shafty build, uh, AR60 axles. It's a bit long in the wheelbase, so this is technically not legal for sportsmen because it has a dig. And also the wheelbase is 13 inch instead of 12.5. But anyway, this is just more of a fun of rocks kind of truck. I'm getting some pretty big clearance out of that rear link. I'm very happy with this. Um, I'll be changing up to an extended output here in the back soon. So um, the drive shaft hanging down right now is not too big of a problem. A little focus, you can see pretty much uh, you can squeezing as much of that clearance out as possible. But yeah, other than that, um, the front obviously has pretty minimal articulation. It's mainly from the back. But yeah, here we are. Um, bent links and uh, the new technique. So yeah, I hope the video was informative somewhat. Uh, it is a bit in parts, but um, yeah. So yeah, um, that was that, the video. I hope everyone enjoyed and found it informative. Um, actually, I'm, on second thought, I'm gonna include the um, Explorer diagram, how to construct them on Thingiverse alongside the 3D uh, files for these. Um, and I just wanna, this is just a little bit talking bit. If you're not interested in what I'm gonna say, then you can just click off. But I want to address some of the um, comments I got from the previous video. Obviously, it's been a while, it's a year. Uh, but a lot of people have been commenting using the um, aluminium rod, uh, sorry, aluminium tube and all thread rod to build your own links. And yes, I am completely aware of that technique that it, and it, that it exists. And it works well enough. But personally, i just not a big fan of aluminium links. It's a pretty soft metal. Yes, it is lightweight, but it's soft also. And on rocks, on especially rougher rocks, they really like to bite into the links and hang you up. So that is why I just run stainless links. Aluminium links, I just don't think it's uh, the best material for links. So that's why I go with stainless. If you don't have the means to do it, the aluminium uh, tube with M4 all thread is, is just fine. It's very serviceable. It's just fine, it works basically the same, but personally, when I'm getting the longer links like I, the ones I built today for a 22 Shafty, I'd like to stick with uh, stainless. So yeah, that's basically the video. I hope everyone enjoyed. Um, again, any questions, suggestions, drop them in the comments. Um, I will be continuing making my own links. Uh, but yeah, that is basically it. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.